The adjust tool is a Swiss army knife. It's used to change all kinds of decal properties. This box is plastered with decals of all four decal types. Simple, subset, panel and info. To bring up the adjust tool, select one or multiple decals. Then press D and choose adjust. Alternatively just press D and A in sequence. The modal HUD of the adjust tool will be displayed with various options and hints. By default the tool will be in height mode, which is what you will be using most of the time. In height mode, adjust changes the distance of a decal to its parent object's surface. To do so, move the mouse horizontally. Keep the select tool in mind when using adjust. By default, you can double click on an object to select all its decals, then run adjust. Adjust allows for mixed selections of various decal types, as well as for non-decals to be among the selected objects. It's smart enough to know what change should be applied to what kind of decal. To leave the adjust tool, you can left-click or press spacebar to confirm, or you can right-click or press escape to abort. With the tool active, and for all its main modes, you can always return to a default value by pressing the X key. Move the mouse to change a property, press X to reset it. There are other modes besides height. To go into width mode, press the W key with the tool active. Or press D, A, and W, in sequence, if it isn't. Decal, adjust, width. D, A, W. In width mode, adjust will change the width of panel decals, which are decal strips created using the slice tool. You can hold down shift or control to modify the amount of change. Next is the parallax mode, which you can access via the E key, or by pressing D, A and E in sequence, if the tool isn't active. Parallax works better for some decals than others. It's probably not so much a change you would do while working on a design. Instead you'd find a good value for a decal you've created, and save it to a decal blend when you add a decal to a library. To go into ambient occlusion mode, press A with the tool active, or press D, A and A in sequence, if it isn't. Then, as before, move the mouse to adjust the strength of the ambient occlusion. There is one more mode, called Stretch, and accessed via the S key, or by pressing D, A and S in sequence if the tool isn't active. But I'll get back to Stretch in a minute. It's relevant only to some panel decals. Finally, you can go back to Height mode, by pressing the Q key. Keep in mind however, that how I demo the tool here, is not how it's used most of the time. Usually, you will enter the tool, change one property, and leave again. You won't cycle through multiple properties and modes and change them all. In the preferences video, I've mentioned how the example panels library is hidden by default, and why it should be kept hidden. Panel decals are not brought into the scene like the other decal types. Instead they are created by the slice tool, and only their material is appended and applied. This is done via the adjust tool. With one or multiple panel decals selected, bring up adjust, and control scroll with the mouse wheel. If you can't scroll, use the 1 and 2 keys instead. This will scroll through all decals, of libraries marked as slice, in the add-on preferences. Panel decals like this one, that have repeating elements along the strip, is what the stretch mode is for. Stretch scales the UVs of panel decals along U. Second most useful, or perhaps even more useful than adjusting the height, is the ability to quickly and precisely change the rotation of a decal along its local Z-axis. This is done by simply scrolling the mouse wheel with the tool active. Or, if you don't have a mouse wheel, use the 1 and 2 keys. It rotates in 45 degree steps, or 10 degrees when holding the shift key, and 1 degree when holding down shift and control. Decals that are already projected, as well as sliced panel decals, can't be rotated. But what you can do instead, is rotate their UVs in 90 degree steps. Just bring up the adjust tool and scroll with the Alt key pressed. In addition to rotating UVs, you can also mirror them across U or V, using the U and V keys. The V mirror is especially useful for panel decals.
if you render your decals in cycles, you may notice what looks like shadows under some of them. Usually it's not a problem, with a properly set decal height and considering decals should be used as details, not for close-up renderings. These shadows are actually reflections, and you can remove them, by turning off glossy rays for this decal. To toggle glossy rays, press G with the adjust tool active. You can also toggle this for all decals from the decal machine panel. Understand that turning off glossy rays, means the affected decals won't show up in, any reflections. I've shown how you can adjust the parallax strength before. You can also toggle it using the P key for the selected decals. Or you can toggle it globally in the decal machine panel. There may be a bit of a delay, when the shaders are recompiling. As explained in the asset loaders and the reapply videos, decals do a normal transfer from their parent objects. You can toggle this on and off using the N key, or globally in the decal machine panel. Normal transfers work best, if the decals have enough geometry to replicate the surface normals. This is the case for projected decals as well as sliced panel decals. Flat decals on flat surfaces don't need it, but it doesn't hurt either. If you take a look at this decal, you can see white bleeding in at the edges of the black typeface. This is because the texture has white transparent pixels. It can be avoided by saving the texture in a way that the transparent pixel color matches the opaque pixel color, but it's not always easy depending on the software you use. What you can do in Blender and Decal Machine to fix this, is switch from linear to closest interpolation. Bring up Adjust and press C to toggle the interpolation. Notice how it also becomes more pixelated as a result, which is a bit of a drawback, but based on my experience not an issue at all. You can do the same in the Decal Machine panel, in which case it's done globally for all decals. The panel differentiates between color and normal interpolation. Normal interpolation applies to normal map decals, but it's likely this will be removed in the future, as there is no longer a need for it. Finally, if you add a decal on top of another decal, you may run into a situation like this, where the decal on top doesn't show as it should, even with sufficient height. What you need to do then, is switch the alpha mode from blend, to hashed. You can do it by pressing B in the Adjust tool, or in the Decal Machine panel globally for all decals. Sometimes changes like these, can take a few seconds for Eevee to catch up. Switching to solid shading and back may help. Last, but not least, you can also invert info decals. Select some, bring up the Adjust tool and press I. This may emphasize the bleeding we've seen earlier. So you can change the interpolation to closest again. Or complain to the decal creator. Try to master the adjust tool, you'll be using it all the time. 